Hello, hello folks, Dan here from H2X, and today we'll be designing a heat pump based heating system onto a new build property. Condensed into under 10 minutes, from the designing to the full calculations. So let's dive in. The first step of any H2X project is to import your PDF floor plan. So let's just go ahead and do this. Now, as you can see, there are a few extra pages. So let me just clean this up precisely to what we want, a ground floor and the first floor. With this done, the next step is to make sure that these two floors are aligning correctly. So when we switch between them, the placement of our equipment remains consistent across both. So the first thing we're gonna do is head into the settings and set up our heat load calculations. So heading to the heat loss menu, we first set our external winter temperature and ground temperature. Now the external winter temperature can be a little more area specific, and we can find that automatically through entering our project address. And with that done, we also need to set our air change rate, determined by the age of the building. And since this is a new build, that makes this post 2006. With this done, it's time to set the U values of our materials. So let's head over to the material settings. H2X gives you a range of materials to choose from, but if you need something different, you also have the option to create your own. Now with all of this in place using H2X's intuitive drag and drop workflow, let's start drawing our rooms onto the floor plan. As we do this, H2X will automatically generate heat load calculations for each room, and we can choose which information we'd like to view via the results dropdown. Now let's continue drawing each room onto the floor plans. Now with all the rooms drawn, it's time to place doors and windows. And notice how our heat loss calculations are updating as we go. You can change the default sizing of doors and windows under materials in settings. Once all doors and windows are mapped on the ground floor, let's do this all again on the first floor. Now the last bit of room drawing we'll be doing is adding a vaulted ceiling onto the kitchen here. And take note as we increase the size of the space, how our heat loss calculations are updating. And now, adding three Velux windows on top of that, we can see our kitchen's heat loss has changed again. And now to begin our heating design, let's add our equipment. And we'll start with the heat pump. Now, entering our heat pump settings, we are going to take a look at our flow and return temperatures. This directly affects our radiator and underfloor heating outputs, our pipe sizing, pump duties, and energy usage. So it's important that we make sure these settings are precise. The heat pump settings also let us take a look at our SCOP rating alongside our pump's noise assessment. And the same goes for the hot water cylinder we'll be adding to the first floor. With our equipment in place, it's time to start drawing our pipe system, which can quickly be done using the multiple pipes tool that draws our feed and return pipes simultaneously. And to get our pipes onto the first floor, we'll be adding risers between levels. With this all placed, now it's time to design our heating layout. When linking our primary pipes from our heat pump to our hot water cylinder, we'll be adding a diverter valve. This ensures that our primary pipes are sized based on the larger of either the hot water load or the space heating load, rather than combining both. Now our layout is mapped and our settings are correct, it's time to start adding our radiators, which is done with a simple click, after which you are then given the option to instantly link your radiators to your pipe system. H2X will automatically size radiators based on the mean water temperature and the room heat loss. With radiators completed, let's move on to our underfloor heating manifold. And once it's placed to keep our design efficient, we'll be linking it to our first floor pipe system using risers. With this done, just before we generate our underfloor heating loops, we're quickly going to draw the exclusion zones where we don't want our loops. For example, under kitchen worktops, kitchen islands, and the stairs. And now going back to the manifold, we can automatically generate each loop by adding our rooms through the manifold settings. And finally, just a bit of housekeeping, some loops are running too long, the rooms are quite large. So using the heated area partition tool, we'll split these loops in two. And with that, our heating system is complete. It's time to calculate our results. So zooming in on our primary pipes, we can already see that the system has automatically sized these pipes to 28 millimeters. And following the primaries up until they split at our hot water cylinder and diverter valve, we can see that the pipes are automatically resized into 22 millimeter pipes for the radiator zone and 22 millimeter pipes for the underfloor heating zone. And then taking a closer look on every pipe, you can see a range of calculations from total heat load each pipe carries to the pipe's flow rate, velocity, and pressure drop. And as you can see on the right here, so much more. Now let's take a look at our heat pump. Cycling through our results, we can already see the pump duty, the flow rate, and the pressure drop. 
and then showing the index circuit, we can instantly trace where in our system we will see the most significant pressure drop, which is the piping to our underfloor heating manifold. Might I remind you, all of this was done in seconds. And now taking a look at our manifold, we can once again see the pump duty, we can see the manifold's heating rating, it's 39 kPa pressure drop, which if you're designing an open loop system, can be added to the pump duty at the heat pump. And finally, we can also see the manifold's 54.73 litre volume, which contributes to the total system volume, which is shown at the heat pump, 144.51 litres. And of course, you can find the dimension details for each underfloor heating loop. Now let's take all of this information and go to our final step, exports. First up, we have our floor plan PDFs, where you can size your design to your liking, include schedules for your radiators and underfloor heating plans, and even select relevant calculations from your results generation and write them straight onto your plan. You also have access to custom cover sheets, notes pages, and a title block with your logo. So you can share this fully branded professional drawing set with your clients or installation team. Now our second piece of documentation is the heat load report, and this tells you pretty much everything you'd ever want to know about your system, and then some. This heat load report systematically goes through all heat load calculations for your entire project, starting with a summary of results, and then going into the specifics, like the equipment models, the external and internal temperatures, your worst performing room, room sizes, materials, room features, U-values, and so on, which all culminates in a room-by-room -room heat loss report. In this report, you'll also find the emitter schedules, your system performance estimates, and a heat pump noise assessment. Finally, our last piece of critical documentation is our bill of materials. This bill summarizes all our material costs for each element of our design. Here at the top, we have different pipe sizes, all neatly separated into a single subcategory, with the total cost as the header. And this style of organization applies to everything below, in a concise and easy to reference layout. And that's it, a full heat pump installation in under 10 minutes. Now, obviously parts of this tutorial were sped up, but I just want to stress the speed of H2X by letting you know that all the work that was done was completed in under half an hour. If you're a consultant, an installer, or anyone else who'd like to try H2X, visit our website and get a first project on the platform for free. Or jump on a free 30 minute demo call and have a specialist walk through the best way to get started with H2X. Take care folks, and we can't wait to see what you create with H2X.